Guys, welcome to this week's Red Dead Redemption 2 video. This time around, it's going to be a little different. Before we get into anything, there will be spoilers ahead, so please be aware. I would advise this video only for people who have either finished the game or already know the outcome. This video is strictly speculation, but I think I have quite a lot of evidence supporting the theory. So sit back, relax, and I hope you all enjoy the video. For those of you who have finished the game, you will all know that Micah Bell was the Pinkerton's rat, not Molly O'Shea, as told to us by Agent Milton. But I have a theory that may prove that the real informer, as you could probably tell from the thumbnail, was actually Abigail Roberts. There's quite a lot of information to get through here, so I want to start from where I think it all began. At the very start of the game, the gang are on the run from the authorities, after the infamous Blackwater ferry heist went wrong. Several of the gang members were either killed or captured, or just separated from the group. This included Sean, Davey, Jenny, Mac and John. Abigail, obviously worried about John, asks Arthur for a favour. She wants him to head out in search of her son's father. He is joined, at the request of Hosea, by Javier Escuela. During this search, Javier, when questioned about the ferry job, gives us some details. So, you were there, Javier. What really happened on that boat? We had the money, it seemed fine. And suddenly they were everywhere. Bounty hunters? No, Pinkertons. It was crazy. Raining bullets. As you can see, he tells us how quickly the Pinkertons showed up, much to their surprise. Even though the heist was going pretty well, it all seemed to go crazy very suddenly. This is the first incident that gives us a little insight that there may be an informer. How else would the Pinkertons have known about the job and been able to act in such a timely manner? You can see just how much Abigail is concerned for John after he's been shot and missing. Maybe this is out of guilt. After Arthur and Javier have returned with John, Abigail is back to being angry with him, now that she knows he is safe. She constantly tries to get John to bond with their son, Jack, but John seems reluctant. Jack. The boy wanted to see you, John. He's seen me now. What's left of me? What about you? Guess I was hoping to see a corpse. <laughs> Bide your time. You'll see plenty of them. You're a rotten man, John Marston. He is an idiot, Abigail. We all know it. Here is another quick clip of a conversation between the gang's leader, Dutch, and John, further showing John's hesitance. I was talking to little Jack. That's a fine boy you got. If he's mine, of course he's yours. It's the truest of gifts, child. Yet you push him away. I ain't no kind of father. I wish the boy no harm, but will you know how we live? We live free. If you say so. But just what drives Abigail to push for this relationship? Well, let's take a look at a hidden conversation that Abigail has with John, Pearson, and Arthur. This is in Horseshoe Overlook. Living in tents, on the run. By my age, I thought I'd be living on some farm somewhere, having some serving girl feed me freshly peeled grapes and another massage on my feet. Funny how things turn out. Said I'm stuck in the wilderness with you degenerates trying to stay warm. Still, guess all that luxury run me to fat, and there ain't no getting fat out here. Now my old hat Grinshaw eats triple rations. Enjoy yourselves. I gotta get on. This is one of the first instances where Abigail openly expresses that a life running with outlaws may not be for her, as she has envisioned a much better life. This is further proven when she has a hidden conversation with Hosea Matthews. Now unfortunately, I couldn't obtain the footage, but I did manage to obtain the audio clip. Let's take a listen. Real frightened. Of what? Pinkertons, bounty hunters. It all feels... We've been in bad situations before, but... I feel like my whole life's been one long, bad situation. I'm a mother. It's the truth, Arthur. Listen all you want, but it's the truth. I'm afraid. First time in my life. I know, my dear. Well, what are we gonna do? 
Is Dutch a... I mean, he's always found a way, but lately I... I know, dear. It seems we don't have a choice but to ride this train to the end of the line. If I were you, think of the boy and make plans. Arthur, stop being strange and tell her to make plans. Listen to Jose, Abigail. I just wish John was... I care about him. Damn fool that he is. I know, dear. Stay calm. Jack needs you calm. Now you will notice how Hosea is advised there to make a plan with their son. He wants her to think of the future. Hosea Matthews plays quite a role in this. He has a great deal of care for Abigail and Jack and always goes out of his way to help them when he can. He's constantly pushing John to be a better father, all the while doing what he can to help Abigail raise Jack. Now Hosea is a caring person and I believe that he has taken Abigail and Jack under his wing for a completely selfless reason. Hosea isn't well. You will catch him around camp, always coughing. Also, when the gang first arrive off the mountains and end up in Horseshoe Overlook, Hosea expresses the touch that he doesn't have long left and wishes to make sure everybody is safe before he goes. We have all made mistakes over the years, Hosea. Every last one of us. But I kept us together. Kept us alive. Kept the nooses off our neck. I guess I'm just worried. I ain't got that long, Dutch. I, I want folks safe before I go. Me too. With Hosea advising Abigail to think of her and Jack's future, I think it's at this time that Abigail comes up with another plan. While still at Horseshoe Overlook, she asks Arthur to do something with Jack because she thinks he feels a little down. Now, Hosea has been helping out a lot and spending so much time with Jack, so why would Abigail all of a sudden need Arthur's assistance too? I have a theory about this. During the mission, A Fisher of Men, Arthur takes little Jack out on a fishing trip, but is confronted by both Agent Milton and Agent Ross, both of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. The two men offer Arthur his freedom in return for them giving up the whereabouts of Dutch Vandalin. But how did they know where to find Arthur? Here's why I think it was a setup by Abigail. I believe she had prearranged the Pinkertons to find Arthur, fully believing that when approached, Arthur wouldn't react violently because he had Jack in his care. Otherwise, if it was a genuine reason for Jack's benefit, she would have asked Jose instead. Also, you will notice something upon their return. Abigail immediately knows something is wrong, even though there's nothing to indicate this. There you are! How are you boys getting on? Great! We caught a fish, and I made you this necklace. Ain't that pretty? Not the luckiest... Did you thank Uncle Arthur? No need. We had a good time. What's wrong? Nothing. Just met some folk. I better go speak with Dutch. Okay. Hey, you did real fine, kid. Thanks. Now jumping forward toward the end of chapter three, Abigail's son Jack has been kidnapped by Catherine Braithwaite. This was obviously not part of her plans, and now she must act quickly. Where before, she had the Pinkertons find Arthur outside of the camp, now she's in a position where desperate times call for desperate measures. I believe that this is when she tells Agent Ross and Milton the exact location of the gang's camp. If you watch when the agents arrive at the camp, you will notice that Abigail is absolutely nowhere to be seen, even though the entire rest of the Vandalin gang are there. I think that she slipped out before they arrived, and maybe even made a deal with the Pinkertons to later help her get her son back. Ah, Mr. Morgan, nice to see you again. And to what do we owe the pleasure, Agent Moron? I don't know if you're aware, but this... this is a civilized land now. We didn't kill all them savages only to allow the likes of you to act like human dignity. The next situation I want to talk about is the San Denis bank robbery. This is yet another incident where the Pinkertons show up incredibly quickly, and here's why I think this had something to do with Abigail once more. During this heist, Abigail and Hosea are sent off to create a distraction, with the intention of leading the San Denis police force away from the bank. It works at first, but once again, just like the Blackwater ferry job, it goes very wrong very quickly. When the Pinkertons show up, they have captured Hosea Matthews. Now Hosea and Abigail were together, so just how did she manage to escape? There were hundreds of police officers and Pinkerton agents all over the streets. Now here is my theory about this. I think Abigail tipped off the Pinkertons to the bank robbery, and Hosea, already knowing he was dying anyway, 
played his part by sacrificing himself in front of Dutch and the boys in hopes that they would give themselves up. Like I had shown earlier, Hosea was willing to help Abigail in any way he could. It's over. No more bargains. No more deals. Mr. Milton, this is America. You can always cut a deal. I've given you enough chances. Come on! Another thing to note about this mission is that the only person to be captured alive during this was John Marston. Now don't get me wrong, I believe that John had no clue about Abigail's plans, but I believe that as part of the deal with the Pinkertons, Abigail requested that John be spared. She really wanted that family life. After the remaining gang members escaped, they end up on Guam, an island off the coast of Cuba, after the ship that they hid upon went down in a storm. It's during one of the missions here that Dutch finally begins to suspect Abigail and John of betraying the entire group. Let me show you a clip. So what happened with John and that bank? He survived. Unlike dear Hosea and Lenny. The only one they took alive. Why is that, you think? I don't know. I was already on the roof. I didn't see it. And Abigail, I presume she was able to slip away in time. What are you talking about? You know, when I look back at all the chaos in the past few weeks, the apparent superficial chaos, I begin to wonder, maybe, for somebody, this is all going exactly to plan. I still ain't sure what you're saying, Dutch. Nor am I quite, but that many? Pinkertons arriving like clockwork once again? I think he's right about Abigail, but truly wrong about John. After finally returning to land, the gang meets up in the Cay. Arthur learns that John, after being captured, is now in prison, awaiting trial to be hanged. I believe that Abigail was lied to by the Pinkertons, and this is why she desperately needs Arthur and Sadie to go and rescue him. I think this because every other incident with the Pinkertons, Abigail always manages to slip away. But at Lakay, when both Abigail and Jack are still with the gang, Agent Milton and his boys show up and have absolutely no issues as to who they kill. It's at the end of this battle that when prompted by Abigail, Dutch refuses to help rescue John. This is because he still believes John to be the rat. I just need somebody to buy me some goddamn time, one of you. You'll figure it out, boss. You always do. What are you gonna do about John, Dutch? John? He's in jail. We'll, we'll get him. Abigail, just not, not yet. There's talk of hanging it. It's not gonna come to that. Dutch! Not now, Mesa. Not now. Later on, a drunken Molly O'Shea returns and confesses to be the one who helped the Pinkertons. I don't think this is true at all, as not only did Agent Milton confirm it wasn't her, it was Micah, but she was just overwhelmed with anger toward Dutch and was just trying to hurt him. But there's an interesting thing in this scene, and it's once again back to Abigail Roberts. When Molly is making a false confession, if you look amongst the gang members, everyone seems shocked and angry. But if you watch Abigail, you can see that she looks visibly upset. She knows full well that Molly isn't the real informer and that it's herself. Right now, she is feeling terribly guilty knowing what happens to traitors, but she still can't confess. I told them! I'm sorry? Yeah, I told them, I tell them again. Now I've got God's ear. You told who? What? Mr. Milton and Mr. Ross about the bank robbery, and I wanted them to kill you. You did what? I loved you, you goddamn bastard. Go on, shoot She's me. Crazy. She ain't worth it. You told on me. Oh, you're you not betrayed so big now, me. Are you? What? Calm down. Arthur? <laughs> She's a fool. Get her out of here. You know the rules. You are not so big now. Are we, Your Majesty? You. Damn. She knew the rules, Arthur. What the hell is wrong with you? Now, after Sadie and Arthur rescue John from the prison and the trio are returning to camp, John informs the others that he believes that when he was captured, Dutch saw it, could have done something about it, but refused. I can't stop thinking about this. In the bank, when they grabbed me, he saw it. Felt almost like he had a, a moment to do something and didn't. 
I think this is because Dutch still believes that John was the traitor, even though, once again, I still feel he knew nothing about it. This is further proven when Dutch expresses his anger that Arthur and Sadie went against his wishes to leave John. You brought him back to me. We told you we would. John! What are you doing here? Good to see you too, partner. I meant I hadn't sent for you yet. I went. But I said that. Yeah, I know what you said. I felt different. Is that so? Yes. What I think is going on here is that Dutch either wants to see John dead or he's waiting to see if they actually hang him. Bear in mind, Dutch, at this point, has completely lost it. And I think, in his own logic, if John is released from prison, that proves he was the rat, and if he is hung, that proves he wasn't. This is kind of a witching trial. Dutch's thought process is further proven. When Arthur insists that he lets John, Abigail and Jack run away, Dutch is furious, and thinks to himself beyond the shadow of a doubt that John and Abigail are definitely the traitors. Hell, yeah. I ain't got much to lose, but... You know, the women and the children, and John and his family. I'm afraid I have to insist. I mean, we gotta let them go, because if the Pinkertons come through again, they will kill everyone. John? Insist? Yeah. Insist. After learning that Abigail has been kidnapped by the Pinkertons, he refuses to send a rescue team, just as he refused with John. And then once again, when John is shot during the final train robbery, Dutch tells Arthur he didn't make it. This was obviously a lie, as I think Dutch was just wanting to leave both John and Abigail for dead. But with Abigail later rescued, and Arthur helping John escape, Dutch never got what he wanted. As we move on over into the epilogue of the game, we now learn that Abigail got what she wanted all along. She got her family life, and she got her home. How are you, Mrs. Marston? I got a useless husband and an angry son. And I'm the happiest woman that ever was. <laughs> Be careful, you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below your thoughts on this. As I said, it's just a theory, but I think it's pretty credible. Do you have any other theories? Do you believe it was Abigail, or maybe somebody else? Or did the gang just get reckless, and that's why the Pickertons kept finding them? If there was any information I may have missed, please let me know. If you wish to get in touch, you can find me on Instagram. The link is in the description. Want to see more videos like this one? Remember to hit like and subscribe for future content. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.